Hey, good evening everybody. Dan here, Ultimate Boston Red Sox Collector page on Facebook and YouTube videos. Um, got my 15th subscriber uh, yesterday, so starting to edge up a little bit. So thank you. Um, not everybody makes their subscriptions public, so I can't always see who's subscribing to me. Some people will put it in the comments or send me a separate message. Uh, but I do appreciate you, my 15th subscriber, and hoping to get some more here. I keep posting videos. I've been posting them almost every night and got some real good support out there. I've had some nice comments um, and had a care package come in the other day from a collector who I returned a care package to. I'm anxious to see his video, to see his reaction uh, to what I sent him. Wasn't a whole lot. Um, I don't have a whole lot other than Red Sox. So uh, what I can send, I, I try to help other collectors out. So... Um, that was that. Um, today, um, I'm going to have a, like a two-pronged video. Um, I did have some cards come in in the mail today. I've mentioned in a few of my other videos how I was expecting another order from Sportwatts that was taking a little bit of time. Um, and I wasn't surprised when I got it. I did finally receive it today. It, ca it was, ca it came from Canada. I wasn't terribly surprised. It was all uh, OPG cards from 1971, 72, and 73. Um, which was nice because I barely had any of those cards. I maybe had a total of six or seven cards from those three sets, and I was able to add about 22 or 23 cards. So I was really happy. Um, the condition of them wasn't great, but no creases. That's my biggest thing. Um, some of the cards were better than others, the 71s. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of white showing on the borders, but that's okay. I'll just show them kind of real quick here. Uh, had George Scott, Bill Lee. RBI leaders with Kyle Yastrzemski, uh, Boo Powell, and Frank Howard. Home run leaders with Frank Howard, Kyle Yastrzemski, and Harmon Kilbrew. Ken Brett, George's brother. Billy Caningliero, Tony's brother. Jarvis Tatum. Gary Peters. Reggie Smith and John Kennedy. Not that John Kennedy. And back to George Scott. So some nice 71s. Um, the, the photos on the cards are exactly as, as the same as the base tops. However, the backs, at least on the 71s, are quite a bit different. They have a black and white headshot kind of hovering in the center of the card as well with the yellowish tint. Uh, those are really cool. I really like the backs on those, something different. Um, the 72s, um, again, same picture as the tops. The back looks like, other than the fact that it's in French, um, looks a lot, reminds me a lot of the Topps Tiffany cards or even OPG cards that were issued later um, from the 80s and 90s. They tend to have a lighter colored back uh, as do like the Topps Tiffany cards. So in the 72s, I got Marty Patton. Sorry, that one's kind of, it's not sticking, but I'm just having a hard time separating it. Mike Fiore, Eddie Casco, who was the manager. Sparky Lyle, probably one of the bigger names I got in this. Ray Culp. Rico Petroselli. And that actually is a duplicate. I already had Rico. I was a little bummed about that. And Rogelio Moray. So the only duplicate I got was Rico. I did not look at my want list when I bought these. I was so excited to see somebody who had some um, that I grabbed them. They were relatively cheap. They were on average about 50 cents a card, so I can't really complain. They're literally probably 50 times harder to find than the regular Topps cards, especially as you go back into the you know mid-60s. I think they started in 65, was the first year OPG made cards. Um, and then they went up to the major sets, um, went up to 1993, I think was the last year they did it. Then they started with the OPG Premier in 91, 92, and then OPG had a regular, had a, had a different regular set back in 92 or 93 as well. And then they just kind of stopped making cards after that. They also made stickers um, in the 1980s. Um, I have most of those sticker sets or a few few that I need for uh, some of the earlier sets, 81, 82. But um, other than that, I've got 
the complete sets of most of those. Um, they also basically any like tops tattoos in 1986, they made an Opeachy set as well. Um, they're actually really hard to come by. Um, I don't own any of the 1986 Opeachy tattoo cards. Um, I you don't see them very often and um, sport lots, nobody has any on sport lots. Beckett probably has somebody who's got them, but I don't like to pay the price. I've been looking to see if I can find somebody who has an unopened box. Because the tops tattoos, I just picked up my first two of those. I still need about seven or eight more to complete that set. So, all right. So, getting back to these 73s, we have Sonny Siebert, another Reggie Smith, Phil Gagliano, Doug Griffin, Lynn McLaughlin, McLaughlin, John Curtis, Marty Patton. Another John Kennedy. Bob Montgomery, more known for his days as an announcer alongside Ned Martin. Used to love those two. Bob Veal. And Lou, oops, sorry, Lou Krause. Those are actually, that last one is a high number. Um, not as big a deal as a regular high number. Uh, 72s, fortunately, they did not make the high number series in, um, in Opeachy. Uh, which are the more expensive cards. I don't know how Opeachy, I don't think Opeachy did series like Tops did. I think they issued the set all at once, uh, but don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure. So, But 72 did not have as many cards in it. 73 was the full set, and I believe 71 was the full set. But for some reason in 72, they cut back the number and the regular high number cards that you would find in the base 72 top set, they did not make in Opeachy. So that actually makes that a little bit more attainable um, for a less expensive price. So I'm happy about that. So that's a nice addition of my Opeachy collection from the 70s. Um, I actually, once I got these in, I marked them off and I got my 70 through 74 checklists done today. I knew these were coming and I didn't want to type those all in for nothing. So um, I've got those done. I'm going to post them after I do my video tonight uh, to my Google spreadsheet page. Um, I'm going to try to figure out how to put a link to that spreadsheet on my video. Um, if for the time being, you can visit my Facebook page. Again, it's Ultimate Boston Red Sox Collector. And you can scroll down through the feed and find my link to my Google spreadsheet, which has my current want lists uh, for many years, not complete yet. It's going to take me some time to get all that done. So, uh, but definitely check it out. And if you have anything off that list, shoot me a message. I'm, I'm, I'm interested. I want to, I want to cross off things off that list. So uh, the next thing I want to talk about, I want to kind of talk about some players. I was looking through some, at some of my autograph cards in my case tonight before I did my video, I was trying to come up with a, with a topic for tonight. And I decided that at least for the next couple nights, I was going to pick out one autograph card that I have of a player that a lot of people forgot actually played for the Red Sox who had maybe really great careers outside of Boston and maybe came to Boston at the end of the their careers, um, you know, and people kind of forget about it. There's a lot of Hall of Famers that played for the Red Sox at some point late in their career, um, but this guy uh, decided to pick this one tonight because um, this guy was one of the greatest pure hitters of the 1990s and um, was very highly touted when he came up. He's most remembered for wearing a batting helmet in the field. Um, of course, I'm talking about the guy who was best known for his time with the Blue Jays and perhaps the Mets, Mr. John Olrude. Um, and this is a card that I have from the Topps Archive Signature Series. Olrude signed. Uh, this one is numbered 210. So this is number one of 10. So it's a pretty hard card to come by. Um, Olrude played the 2005 season with the Red Sox. Um, was not a full-time player. I don't know if he was injured or not. I really didn't like Wikipedia, all his stats and everything, but he did hit 289 for them, had seven home runs, 37 RBIs, and had a 795 OPS. Um, so he had some decent numbers. He probably was platooning back then. Um, again, I just kind of grabbed his card and looked at the back of the stats. I don't remember everything about Olrud. And again, um, a lot of you probably don't remember that he played for the Sox. So he did have that one season with the Red Sox. Um, he was just a great hitter. He broke through in the 93 season when Toronto won their second straight World Series. Uh, he won the batting title. He hit 363. He had an OPS of over one. It was like 1.072. Um, he led the league in doubles with 54. He was uh, just a really good hitter. And again, most people remember him for the fact that he was 
uh, that he wore his batting helmet in the field. He had had some kind of a um, head injury or brain injury when he was younger, and uh, it was a precautionary method that he that he took. And uh, he was a great hitter. I think he was ended up with the stats on the back of this card up through the 20, 2005 season. He was a two ninety five career hitter. So that's uh, pretty impressive. There's not a lot of guys uh, in the last 25, 30 years who played that have a career batting average close to or above three hundred. Um, so. He had a really good, nice career. Uh, won a couple World Series with Toronto. Um, I don't think he won. He he spent several years with Seattle too. Had some good years there. Um, I believe he was part of that 2001 Mariners team that won 116 games and then fell flat in the playoffs. Uh, each rose rookie season. Um, but John Olroot, a guy who you probably forgot, played for the Red Sox. So I'm gonna maybe pick out. And I don't know how long I'll do this. I, I was looking at my case tonight, and there's a bunch of guys that I could have picked. And John Olroot, for some reason, just kind of stood out at me. And I said, I'm gonna talk about John tonight. Um, look back at some of his uh, video of his playing days. He had such a nice swing, just real natural. Um, I I think he probably maybe if he had better lineups around him. Although he he was always on decent teams, but uh, you know he. Just a really good hitter, and um, again, it's hard to find players from the last 20, 30 years that have batting averages close to or above 300 for their career. So, John Olrud, uh, one-year wonder for the Red Sox. Not wonder, I guess I shouldn't say wonder. He played a year for the Red Sox. So, um, yeah, so that's what I've got for tonight. Um, I uh, got a little bit of sun. You can probably see, I might have a little sunglass eyes going. I got a little bit of sun today. It was a beautiful day here in Maine, and we're expecting another one tomorrow. So going to get out on the deck and clean the deck and uh, maybe even mow the lawn because it's getting a little bit long with all the rain we've had. So, um, But uh, that's all I have for tonight. Again, if uh, I'm going to try to insert a link to my Google spreadsheet page at the end of this video. It may not work. So if it's not there, it means it didn't work. But uh, thanks to everybody who's supporting me, watching my videos, all my subscribers, and the people placing comments. I really like to see the comments. Um, and uh, I thank you all for your support. And I hope you have a great evening. And we will probably talk to you tomorrow.